Okay, I get the point to get started. My name is Astrid. Beside I have Julia. We are, we are from Kreuzwerke, an Atlassian Platinum partner. And since yesterday, the first DACH ITSM specialization company. So a big wow to us. It's early in the morning for us. So we do have one coffee and uh, we will try to talk about our topics, tickets, services and people, mechanism of your digital transformation. I do the chat, so feel free to ask questions and we will ask it behind the presentation from Julia. So I hand over to you, over to Julia. Thank you very much, Astrid. Good morning, everyone. So it will be me holding the session. I hope everybody hears me well. Please let us know if not. So uh, my name is Julia, as you can see on the slides. Um, I've been with Kreuzwerke for a little over two years now and have been in the tea industry for like more than 10 years already. And would like to talk about the ticket services and people, the mechanism of digital transformation. So um, first of all, um, it's early in the morning for us. Yes, we are in Germany, Berlin right now. And I just wanted to show you something. Hope everybody can see it's like a stress ball, but it looks like the whole world. And this is basically where we are at with the digital transformation. So the whole world has to do it. And uh, now after everybody in the whole world has been hit by COVID, they even have to do it quicker. So this is so far the introduction and we will just dive into the whole topic. No. Okay, so first of all, a brief reminder. So what is the difference between digitization and digital transformation? So the digitization means in the process of converting information into a digital format. So what does that mean? I brought another thing for all of you. I hope everybody of you know, this is like pen and paper. Um, this is how we used to do or to, to provide information and to pass it over, I would say maybe 50 years ago. And uh, in today's world, once again, um, it's more feasible and more convenient to do it in a digital format. So this is the actual what we are doing. And the digital transformation is then the how. So how do we adopt the digital technology into an organization or several organizations, depending on where you're at? And this is basically the difference between the two terms. And to give you some numbers here, so we have 82% of technology leaders who struggle with a cross-functional collaboration. So in that sense, what does cross-functional mean? Cross-functional means it can be among your organizations or between different departments. Um, in Germany, we have a saying like the, the, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Maybe someone of you also know that in another language. And this is basically already cross-functional. And of course, it can also then be pushed to how do we do things with our customers? So us being a consultancy company, we do have customers, of course, so that we also do have this cross-functional collaboration. And you can just move it over to any other um, department or any other area where you have to do things. And to see that number, basically, so it's more than like four-fifths of um, the leaders who just aren't aware of how to do it. And this is the baseline where we should start. So the next slide, it's then 68% of the CIOs. So they surveyed and believe that their departments are not prepared to survive another major business disruption. Why are we talking about business disruption here? Again, coming back to the pen and paper, this is a completely other task for a human being to do. And this is what it's also about today a bit. So us as human beings, we are basically in the middle of everything to do this change and to also like to do how and also to do the what on this change. And if we are looking into the past, the past couple of decades there, we used to use our hands just to write something down, like usually doing these three fingers or for the lefties, these three fingers, of course. And now for um, the ones of you who are then doing the job day by day and also providing information into the respective format, meaning digital, I hope, I think the best of us will be using all 10 fingers. I mean, that's the first step. And that means, so 
using all 10 fingers then to know where is the actual information, to whom should it go, how do I do that, where do I have to click, all of those questions can be asked at that point, also with regards to being a human being, me being not that old, I hope, um, I'm still capable of providing the change, having a child who will be just testing things, for example, and putting something into a computer, I have a 10 year old at home, this is now like, hey, a whole new world, yes, mom, give me your laptop, and no, you're not getting it, um, and then having someone who's a bit older, who may be not that um, reliable on the change, and, and, and not that willing to provide the change, that's quite a big number. And then, to give you an idea on the whole um, topic of when did we start, how far have we come, what were the disruptions in the last couple of decades. Um, I hope I think that um, slide is, speaks for itself. So it's not a question of an if we should do that, but it's rather a question when. And um, the question of when just shows you here. So we have the last three decades where a major companies that are now big global players just started. So for example, Netflix, I think everybody's watching something on Netflix these days, just started 1997, which is basically 25 years ago. Now they're on top of the game. Or Slack, which is now uh, one of the top communication channels. They started in 2013. And there you have to see how fast we are developing. And this fast development is of course, not for every human being. I mentioned the ages or the different demographic, demographical topics before. So going to the next slide, there are two dimensions of digital transformation. One is an operational. So how do we do things? This is the how that I mentioned before. So the what, again, what kind of information do we have to provide? And the how is then, how do we implement it? How can we really enable every single employee on a department level to use the tools and the possibilities, everything that we have in place in order to get the outcome and the results that we want or that everybody should be wanting on a team level in an organization? And then the strategic part is, what are we doing? So the strategic part is, what are we doing in order to achieve um, our goals to achieve our growth, to achieve digital transformation in order to be able to be a global player. And with those two dimensions, we have to keep in mind that we have to make them work together, of course, because if we know how to do it, but we don't know what to do, that's a bit pointless. And if we know what to do and we don't know how, we just have the baseline, but we are missing the steps. Coming to the next slide, these are the digital strategies. So these are the what's, so to say, compared to the how's of how to do the operations directly. So what do we have here? Just a, a, a bit of a, a setup. We do have a non-digital organization, for example. So there we don't have any digital offerings. I have to come back to the pen and paper once again. And um, there's also missing IT knowledge. So that means we don't have the how. We may have the what, because the what may be somewhere on a paper. And there we would need a pragmatic IT, meaning uh, an ad hoc to and true IT. To and true in, in, in German means just a running shoe or a shoe for sports. And this is how we um, say it in a way that someone knows, okay, we just have to start somewhere. We don't know what it is, but we just have to do the first step. And here we have also a minimal organization, meaning we don't have that many um, influences from, from wherever topics we would like, like security or something. We'll come to that one later. And there it's a matter of just start. So just do the first step, do the sports part. And then... Um, a digital starter. So this is already a step further, so to say. There we do have already defined and communicated IT goals. And the business objectives are clear. So there we do have a bit of strategic setup already. So what does the IT do in that case, usually? So this is the reactive IT, as we call it. And there we have an organization of division of labor, meaning we do have our departments or teams 
who know what they have been doing and how to do it usually. And they then can focus on event and management practices, meaning we can now really roll it out and support the business objectives with the IT setup in order to achieve what we want. The next one, a digital follower. So a digital fo follower is an IT org structure that is built up and established already. So we do have uh, um, an awareness of how things are done. Um, the IT organization does know what they want to do. And there they also do have the respective roles and people and also the workforce in order to start it and, and to implement it. And um, the IT is already also in the next step. So the IT identifies as a digital transformation enabler. So they are aware of the new trends. They know how it's done. If they know, they might ask someone else like outsource or anything. We'll come to that one later again. And there we can already start and implement the topics. So for the IT, this is then a proactive IT who is on the go. And um, they do live the business processes. They do have a proactive incident management, for example. So they will detect the issues themselves and also possibly resolve them, um, again, or outsource it to another partner or to another business level. And then the next one is the digital transformer. The digital transformer is an IT capabilities that are already positioned in the whole organization and also the values for the business are visible. They are transparent towards the business. So there we do have the departments already cross-functional working with each other actually. And they also have an active supplier evil, meaning so the end-to-end -end process, cross-functional teams or departments within the organization are already defined and they are also lived already. So that's also kind of a question usually like, there are processes, there are uh, requirements. We have some um, something that has been agreed already, but the actual doing is again, there we have the human being. And for the human being, I also sometimes tend to have a post-it on my, on my desk or on my monitor to say, okay, I still have to do something, but I need to remember, I have to inform maybe Astrid as we are also uh, cooperating together at Kreuzwerke. Astrid, there is a sales deal. You have to help me out, please. And then the post-it is for me, not for her. So it's not visible for her. And here for the digital transformer, meaning I will take my post-it, put it into our internal gyro system, and then say, Astrid, please take care of that. So that will be already another step and another transformation. And here the service IT is in place. So there we do have already a service catalog, meaning what to be provided as a services, what information do we need? Where's the information lying? Like also databases, um, do we have cloud technologies? How do we align there? Then also the SLAs, so service level agreements. That means for the service level agreements, if someone is putting information in and asking for it, I already do have, or as a user, I already do have an idea or it's documented somewhere when my request will be at least answered usually and or picked up and or resolved. So there are already business processes in place that say at one particular point, you will get an answer. At some point, you will get a resolution. And then also process-oriented IT services, meaning so as we have those processes defined, again, coming back to the living of something that has been agreed on, we also should be living those. So we should really keep ourselves in the discipline to do the things that we agreed on doing. And of course, also the cost management for the services. So if we have a service catalog, if we know what has to be done, simple example here again. So me, I crushed my phone a bit lately. So I would be like putting in a ticket towards our IT department and say, hey, please, I do need a new phone. I crushed my new one, but I want to have the newest iPhone 14. So normally I hope that, that my, 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 at least my manager will be doing so. He will come back to me saying, Julia, you're crazy. Why do you need an iPhone 14? Another model would do as well. And this is something that is in the service catalog then. So for example, who is from the employee side, um, let's say capable of providing what technical features or what technical hardware. And this is how it should then, then be going in order to have 
the cost management topic also in the back of our heads and looked at. And then, of course, Agile and DevOps are established, meaning um, if at some point we are able to get in our internal company an iPhone 14, this should be also then be visible to the employees. And um, of course, then everybody will be wanting an iPhone 14 and they will be asking for it. And this is also then the DevOps um, or the agile approach to have a change already visible for everybody. And the DevOps will then be, we do have a service request that is new and for the actual doing, we can put it to operations and say, yes, of course, the manager has to approve it, for example. Then maybe also accounting has to approve it usually because those things are pretty, pretty expensive um, to buy for. And after having this DevOps operation can be agreed on and carried out. Last, uh, the most important one, or let's say the, the, the further down the road one, the digital leader. So that means we do already have continuous improvements and practices. So there, we not only have a setup where we can enhance something, but we do have a setup where we already know how to enhance something. That's the main difference here. Meaning for the, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, for the improvements, there's already also a, a business case in place and also processes available. Then periodic reviews, that means that for the periodic reviews, also we would like to get feedback. We would like to review what we are doing to question ourselves. Are we still on the right path? Because if we don't question ourselves, we end up at some point with, this is how we used to do it all the time. Why should we change? And also um, the supplier performance management. So there, usually for the digital leaders, we do have partners. We do have other companies in place also provide us with information who support us on setting up the IT. And there, of course, should be someone or any kind of means to really have a performance management for those who are cooperating with us. And here we're coming back to the security topic. Of course, if we are digital leader, we should have security in place. Um, so who's that Julia who wants to have a 14, an iPhone 14? Maybe she's not working for her company. How did she come up with that request? She hacked, our, she hacked us, so this is something that has to be looked at. And here we have a value AT. Value AT means we do have a cost allocation based on SLAs already. So first of all, we had the cost management where we know what costs are behind it. And now the cost allocation is based on SLA. So that means that if the SLAs are not, um, uh, are not capped, that also might be something where we have to pay a fee for if a ticket has been resolved 24 hours later than expected, for example. And then we do have quality management. Of course, so what kind of information has been provided? Again, hopefully not on pen and paper this time. And I have to burn down my post-its from the monitor. Um, so there we do have the quality management of what information, who provided that information. Um, if there has been an approval for me to get my iPhone 14, yes. Um, who approved it? Maybe it was a completely other person that shouldn't be allowed to do it. And we're coming back to the IT security portion. And there we have to review the whole topics. And of course, the service definition and the development based on the values. So services can be provide access to something. Um, me now having um, the whole setup for today's session, we had this gladly the service of our internal IT um, support who then also was able to tell me, hey, you have to type the password that is written somewhere. So this is something that we have to do. Coming to the next topic, there are new trends for 2022 that will hopefully be also established further. So first of all, of course, low code or no code tools. Coming back to the topic of having a child, let's say a grown up and an elderly person, if an elderly person is working in the IT, they most likely won't know how to develop something, like really how to write code or to make something work. And there, um, at least they're not developers, nothing against elderly persons. And there, um, we would have to provide a fit for the business requirements for the people to enable them 
everybody to do what the tools need to do without having a dependency towards uh, uh, someone else being a developer to support. Then automation. In our daily business, automation is a huge uh, benefit of not being capped in a way that we have to click five times something, 10 times a day in order to achieve a result. So there, if that's a work that can be automated, of course, everybody will say, hooray, um, I don't have to click it five times, I just click it once and then system does the rest. And this is how we can then really put the workforce of the human beings, of our employees to the world where the work is really and provides an outcome where they also feel appreciated and they can do the things that they like to do. Data analytics, there again, so we can enable organizations to make a more informed business decision if we have the data. So if there is no possibility to check someone's clicking five times to send an email, I'm exaggerating a bit, I know, um, we won't know that we can enhance it. And there might be an employee or several employees who are a bit um, into their own tunnel who just don't think of how to enhance things and they wouldn't come to us and say, hey, we had an improvement. And now data analytics come into place in order to have it done. Then cybersecurity focus. Again, coming back to the security topic. So in 2020, I'm just now reading out the numbers because they're really um, uh, high in my eyes. So in 2020, we had a data breach of almost $4 million globally with regards to cybersecurity and um, almost 9 million in the United States. So that just for you to have the number in the background that cybersecurity is on the go, we have to see that our data is also kept under wraps. So if our internal organization in order to succeed. I think I read recently that there was a, a manufacturer in Germany that went bankrupt because they were hacked and the servers were not able to retrieve the data back. So there, a whole company is going down basically. Then the fifth, multi-cloud. Of course, um, now we have the cloud technologies so there we don't have necessarily to have physical servers standing somewhere, being kept by the internal IT, being maintained by the internal IT, so there we can outsource everything and also having faster turnaround times and also um, a bigger possibility to store actual data. Increased data quality. Um, yeah, just go back to three and, and check to number three, the data analytics and check there. Um, so there, the data quality we need it in order to have the analysis in the right way, of course. And the 5G enabled. So 5G introduces the new innovation that are possible. And there we have, or well, we should be following those in order to keep our business intact. Coming back to the example of the German company that now has to go bankrupt because um, they didn't follow uh, specific measures in order to keep their data safe, to keep their servers alive. Coming back to the next slide. So IT is evolving really fast. And so these are the possibilities that we have. So first of all, there is an organization that is hierarchical. There we have an architecture that is monolithic, which is a monolith like a big stone, where we don't have any capacity to go outside of it or to break out of it. The development is, let's say the old school one, <laughs> the waterfall one. Uh, where we have the requirements, we have also the dates, we have an um, end date and then dependency. So we can't start with anything before ending something else. The releases are usually pretty slow. So really a quarterly because we have the waterfall system because we are not really able to adapt to change. And the practices are process driven. So maybe someone's coming from, from a project manager background a bit as I do, that we used to have those big charts with when do we start this? When do we end that? And then the latest thing is then the release. And therefore the users, so the human beings, they're really waiting for something, a smaller change maybe, coming back to the five clicks to send an email um, can be done or can be broken down to two clicks um, and they have to wait for it three months. That's a bit, a bit too high. And then the practice, uh, the hosting, sorry, their physical data center, 
I said that before, we do have the servers that we have to maintain that have to be there. Um, sourcing is in-house. So this is the so-called in-house IT then. And the support is tier-based. Tier-based means depending on how the business case is set up, we have a certain tier of, of specific incoming tickets and they will be worked on. The next step or, or, or the next level is then the product line within the organization. If we have a product line, so several lines, we have an anti-architecture. So it's not one big stone anymore, but every department or every product line is looking after their own topics. The development is then agile because we don't have to push everything into one line. So there, the product lines can decide on their own how to do the development. And the release can be, for example, monthly. Depends on the product line. Usually when we start the transformation process, um, we're doing it on a monthly basis and we might be breaking it down a bit. Um, then the practice as such is practice driven. So we learn from what we are doing, meaning the feedback that we're getting, we can implement it usually. Of course, it takes a bit of time, but at least we're implementing it. We are not waiting for another um, process, for another possibility to address it. The hosting is virtual, as I said before. So we do have the cloud topics. We do have the technologies and the capacities to build it into another gear. And the sourcing here, we are outsourcing our IT. We are outsourcing the topics that we are not really good at. So the product line, they know what they're doing. They have a product, they develop it. And the rest, we are not experts in. We can outsource it to another partner, to another relationship. And here enable ourselves of concentrating on what we're good at. And the support then, thereby will be a skilled support who knows how to do things, how to react, what to perform, what to report. And thereby, the organization that is like the key uh, uh, for ourselves, the, the, the key goal is an autonomous organization that doesn't have the dependencies anymore as it used to be. So the architecture is then microservices and APIs for us in order to be able to outsource things, but still keep our systems in a way to be able to, release, to, to get and to send the data actually. The development is then DevOps. So development and operations. And for the release, we do have a CI CD pipeline where we can say, okay, we are releasing a new feature, but there was an important bug coming in, for example, um, that has been attended and that has been resolved. And we are releasing the fix for that bug already in the next release. Coming back to the five clicks compared to two clicks. Um, if there has been feedback that the five clicks are too much, it's not a bug right now, it's an improvement actually. Um, and we are able to provide it towards two clicks. We change it and then we release it in a faster way. And now for the value stream, practice means we are valuing the feedback of our employees, customers, whoever has to provide it. Thereby, we also learn and are able to act quickly. The hosting is then cloud, usually, as we said. Um, and on the cloud, then also we are able to provide the services as we've asked them for. The sourcing is then service brokering, meaning we do have the services that are aligned in the cloud that are coming from different um, sources here. And the support is then the self-service and help. So having those different um, topics and then having also the possibility for the users to actually look up how do I change something and they are enabled to change it. You remember the... Um, the topic that I had before with the automation or with the low code solutions. So as long as they're enabled to do so, they can have a self-service, try it out and see that it works. My little daughter having my laptop in her hands. Um, it's only YouTube kids there, nothing more. Nearby, the benefits. We have a data-driven and AI and ML um, in the IT operating model, meaning we do have as you remember, reliable data. So we do have good data that we can then analyze and provide it into the operating model in order to enable a faster shipment, to enable ourselves of actually improving and enhancing topics. Security risk and compliance by design means as we are service brokering topics, we're leaving the portions with the experts who know how it goes, 
then we don't have to provide our own resources to be experts in everything. Coming to the next slide. In the middle of the whole IT setup, just leaving you to, to read it a bit, we have a digital business transformation, meaning for the business, they have to transform themselves first, so to say. And that way we have um, from waterfall to an agile setup. So what do we need? How do we do things? We start from, from a bird's perspective and then go down. We have new technologies, meaning there, data, uh, big data, cloud. We have the um, internet of things technologies. Anything that is new right now, we should be using it. And pressure on IT. So the pressure that comes in is to deliver the new capabilities to lower costs. And IT right now will be in the position of, we have to understand what's going on. We have to really keep up with the world, but we don't have to do it ourselves. So we have to find a partner usually to the brokering, for the brokering services in order to enable ourselves to do things. And then new methods and mindset are coming into place. So agile delivery, continuous integration, DevOps, two-speed IT, meaning after having all this data, after being enabled to do so, to have read what is needed to, to, to be on top of the technologies, we would need to know how do we adopt this into our own IT um, department, department, into our own IT setup. Coming to the next slide. What is hindering the ability to adopt quickly in the face of those disruptions? Of course, I'm still keeping the example of having a child, an adult, and an elderly person. So this is the individual setup, of course, uh, for anyone who is working in IT. And then on a more, uh, on a higher level, we would say we have silo teams usually. So the, these are usually the groundbreaking topics where teams don't even talk to each other. They sit in different locations, maybe. They, they don't know that IT is being outsourced. They um, just provide a ticket, putting in the information that is written there, and that's it. Then silo data, of course. So if we have silo teams and if we are still on the on-prem solution, so on-prem meaning server solution, um, the data doesn't talk to each other. So if there are no APIs, if there are no integrations across the company, um, how should we know what is going on? Manual works. I was <laughs> begging on that one all the time. So the five clicks that can be put down to two. And uh, silo tools. So silo tools there as well. Um, the silo data is on, on the database. So there, how do we analyze data? How can we connect it with each other? And uh, silo tools means in that way that we do have applications maybe that are also not communicating with each other. And we have to provide the work manually. Just think of when do I have to put in a link into a system to know that system, to know that in another system, there's information that's linked to it. It's a bit tricky. Next slide. Oh, I have to overjump that one. Sorry for that. Um, so here we have the topics of the larger the organization. Then we also do have the complexity that is increasing, meaning what we're looking at are budgets, bottlenecks, who is doing what, what risks do we have, which objectives and interests do we want to follow um, from a department, from, from maybe a product line team, anyone. Um, the trade-offs, reprioritization of work, for example. So there to have those different um, topics in the back of our heads is crucial in order to make it work. Next slide. So how do we do that? Basically, how do we resolve those topics? So we have to ship faster. We have to keep the services always on so that we know what is going on. Um, what are ch the changes? How do we implement those changes? And also to deliver seamlessly. Seamlessly means like for uh, uh, release, we would just break down the whole system and, and the users are not able to work. But we do have a release process that still enables our users to still be able to work on their own systems. Then the traditional model of IT operations and services. Hope you can read that. 
just let it sink. Um, this is how it used to be. So we do have the different departments. The um, departments are sometimes cooperating with each other, sometimes not. Uh, we do also have the different what's so different data in place where we have to find data within the departments, coming back to the cross-functional topic, and those have to talk to each other to know what they're doing and how they're doing it. And here we do have the cross-team collaboration that has to be put in place because otherwise we simply don't know who of the different teams needs what data, at what point, maybe also an information simply um, on another point in time in order to be able to be enabled to cooperate properly. So here, in order to resolve that, or in order to tackle that, we do have the autonomy with the alignment. So we do have modern support and modern operations, meaning if we get the support, if we get the possibility to uh, be at our user's pace, we do have to provide the backbone, so the operations to support it and to be able to roll it out. Some more numbers this time. So delivering support has changed radically, meaning 20% of our knowledge workers' time is spent looking for information. So this is something that you have to keep in the back of your head. One fifth of the time that I'm actually working, I have to look up what do I have to do? sometimes where can i find a particular setup where can i find a particular piece of information that has to enable me to do my work and this is basically a bit of a lost time i hope you agree here then 56 percent of employees expect consumer grade experience meaning um the employees they don't want to know everything they would like to be a consumer here so they would like to know or, or to know where to find that information and to find it quickly, and then to be able to do their work, they would expect it to be written somewhere, not just kept on the wraps or coming back to my example on pen and paper where nobody can see it. And 55% of executives plan to extend the long term remote working options, which then provides us backwards to. My small little ball over here, it is useful for stress. This is the whole world. And uh, if we have the half of it that will be able to work remotely, we have to provide the backbone and also the capability to enable our employees to work from anywhere in that world. So um, as Astrid mentioned in the beginning, um, we are at Kreuzwerker working for Atlassian Partners. This is why um, I've brought up the Jira service management as an example. So Jira service management is a um, management solution provided by Atlassian in order to give the operational part. This is an example here. Um, so there we do have the development and the offset flows, meaning we do have both in parallel. It's not that we say, okay, we are only putting in new features. We don't look on the bug side. Anything that is not working where incident we are not interested in, but we don't. We do want to have a proper setup and doing it in parallel. For the modern operations, then make the work visible. So we want to have the, the value stream there. We want to know how did we do that, and um, also towards our users, how hey, we picked it up quickly. We resolved the issue. Please follow up. Check if it's working. And then it's also easier to track and to see what have we done. And then coming back to the value stream. So deliver value fast. This is then the business side of it in order to get our users happy. Sometimes I've um, seen some articles saying they're happy engineers in the companies. So we have to make our users happy to provide the value stream fast in order um, to get the ITSM solutions properly working in order to lower cost and complexity here. A summary. So the new OS requires for IT, the digital transformation should be a new standard for the whole operational model in the IT. So there, as I said before, with the numbers 55% of the workers should be able to work remote. Um, that's something that we have to back up here. 
Um, ITSM, so IT service management then, got us also C-level attention, of course, because it's actual workforce that is then triggered in there. And, and we have to make it lean, maybe, make it a bit faster and easier to provide. And with regard to a study, with regards to a study, we have also some participants that are more important on strategic topics here. Of course, pandemic impact. Pandemic impact means who was driving the actual digital transformation set up in the last couple of years? One of them was COVID. So there we have to fasten up. And I also have to fasten up as I was told. So I'm just keep it a bit faster with the talking. I hope you don't mind. So service management across the enterprise, we have to standardize everything. We have to provide the respective checklist information flows in order to get done. And IT needs to be connected to the overall strategy. So it's something that it shouldn't be in the basement or on-prem service to run it, but to really integrate it into the whole organization. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And looking into Astrid's direction, waiting for some questions. Yes, of course, we have some of them. Uh, one of them, how many clients com uh, companies has your team lead or deployed a transformation? One's covering many, some of these broadly ranking impacts. Okay. Um, so in, at Kreuzwerker right now, we have roundabout for the ITSM and the DevOps session, I would say 15 to 20 customers where we also do the transformation. Uh, from a personal take, um, me being in the IT industry for a bit over 10 years, I've done some transformations on different levels. So from a startup towards a bigger company, a bigger content in, in, in uh, Germany, I would say it might be 25 for myself. And there, I um, think the challenges were also a question, right? Yes, yes so for the challenges... Again, um, there, the, the most challenge or the biggest challenge is usually to get the acceptance by the users, actually, because if we um, conceptualize something, if we have some requirements in place and we just close ourselves up into uh, behind closed doors and, and provide some solutions to it without talking to the users, they won't accept it. And if the users won't accept it, then um, it's, it's pointless to do. So there to really be on a user's side, sometimes it's even as simple as sitting next to a person, let him or her explain what they're doing, what their pain points are, gather that feedback, go back to, uh, to the team of, of our developers of the delivery team and say, hi, hey, this is the problem that we have. How can we resolve it? This is helpful because people, sometimes they're just in their tunnel and they don't see the enhancement that can be done. And this acceptance to get them the change accepted is a crucial thing for me, the most crucial one. Hope I answered the question. Hmm? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. And maybe we speak soon again. <laughs>